Bye, go back to Carousel Kids. Hope you find this lovely day. Sun is shining. Beautiful. I rinsed a bit, as you can see. So now I can actually look out of my window. <laughs> and actually see stuff. <laughs> no, um, that's not going to happen for long. Here's where the new cultivation cabinet is going to be. Just the right size. 120 centimeters long and 80 centimeters tall. Um, yeah, I'll be moving stuff around a bit. Move the bench from here to there instead. Well, it's working. It's working out great. And not even noticeable, so <laughs> that's perfect. I'm gonna put a, a couple of larger players there. These guys are only sitting there temporarily, so uh, anyway. When I was at it, I, I decided to spray all of them and go through a real scale perch. I would like to extinct them for good. Uh, yes, I know that I said that before, but uh, this spray is really working. My um, leaf shine, leaf gloss from Nelson Garden, the one I always talk about, but, uh, but it's really working. Um, this one is newly sprayed. Look at the leaves, they're really shiny and beautiful. And it also smells quite bad, so you better not put your nose into it and stay away a bit while spraying. Spraying in a, perhaps in your bathroom or, or outside, <laughs> as long as the wind is not blowing, <laughs> that is. But anyway, um, it's doing its job. It's a fatty spray, so it suffocates the insects, the little mean bastards. And I've gone through all of my orchids on the shelves here. As I said in my previous video, and um, <laughs> but there was also something else going on. They were growing out of the pot, so a lot of them just needed to be upsized a bit. So that's what I'm up to uh, at the moment, um, as well as some of them really, really need a, a large size pot, a little bit too large size pot now. So. I'm thinking about dividing a few more. Uh, the thing is that the place where I can give them away or sell them or put them into an auction or at the lottery or such is at the Orchid Society meetings. And we're unfortunately they're cancelled for a bit now due to COVID. And most of the guys, or almost all of them, as a matter of fact, are growing in organic media. So if I bring my orchids which been sitting in semi-hydroponics to them yeah they wouldn't like it so yeah we shall see what I'm gonna do um, perhaps transition a few into regular bark media organic media and then after a while bring them to the orchid society meeting and put them up at the lottery yeah perhaps but anyway I've got a few to deal with. Some needed some urgent maintenance, really. A huge red alert on those guys. So, let's start with three cat, cattleya type orchids in my kitchen and deal with them. The show must go on. It cannot wait. Otherwise, I will probably lose a few of them. And that's not my goal. Yeah, follow me into my normal place, reporting place in my kitchen. Well, I've got about 30 orchids to deal with. Oh, uh, if that's enough, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, 30 orchids in one video. It's going to be a little bit too long video. It's going to be about five hours long. So, I better split them up in uh, some kind of um, reporting session. So, orchid alert maintenance session. So, I'm not sure yet while I'm standing here. What I'm going to name them. But, uh, well, for now... It's not really all that important, but so I just figured three orchids at a time could be, um, yeah, enough amount, enough for you to see, not being bored. <laughs> anyway, what do you see? Cattleya type orchids, yeah. Let's start with this one. This little fellow is a Cattleya type orchid, Lelia type orchid, as a matter of fact. It's a cross between Lelia brigeri, the yellow 
beautiful little Cattleya. And Cattleya Eclandii. Yeah. So, the size <laughs> is inherited from Brigeri. Not from the Eclandii. I can assure you that. Here's the full grown Eclandii. Yeah. And here's the cross. So, yeah. Anyway, why do I want to mess about with that one? I mess this lovely orchid up. Yeah, you can see why. It's been transitioned into semi hydroponics in, I think it was in September. They're all soft and mushy. They need to come out of this pot. Ah, and some scale. No, but this one has always had a little bit of scale, no matter what I, what I did to prevent it. So uh, let's just clean that one off. That's the same goal, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, we're going to deal with this one. But it did adjust, or shall we say adapt, better than I firstly would have thought. This one is a kind of fussy one, just like its parent, the Eclandii. I don't, I know too little about this. Oh, uh, no, I don't know anything about this Brigeri, so... Brigeri, so... Uh, but I do know that Eclandii is a little bit fussy. So, well, yeah, um, <laughs> look at it. <sighs> do I want to split it up in two pieces? I thought it already was two pieces in here, but never mind. I shall use the disinfected scissors here and cut the old dead leafless pseudobulbs off. This one's coming off as well. These guys coming off. Doo. And this little soft mushy fowl is also coming off. Oh, Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if it's. Yeah. It still stays in one piece. So it might as well just stay in one piece. So the rhizome is. Kind of, sort of, intact. Really? Yeah. Just make it a little bit uh, narrower. And, of course, get rid of the scale. And how? And where are they now? I cannot see anymore. Not so much. But they are, of course, somewhere in there lurking. Yeah, I got a knitting stick. <laughs> or oh, what do you want to call it? It's my new word for it, perhaps. Um, just making up English words here. Translate them directly from Swedish. Why not? I bet you all understand what I'm saying anyway. So. Yeah. Now. This is the way it's going to be. And now, let's look for... Some dead roots, of course, and clean this one up. It hasn't yet been cleaned up, so it's about time for it anyway. So, it's nice. Let's see, too, that it's clean, really clean. And this root is also teddy. Yeah, not much left really. A few good roots and some stopped growing due to um, lack of humidity, as always. And, well, I'm not going to do much about the scale right now, but I am going to spray it with hydrogen peroxide. Why not? Clean it up a bit. Yes. And I will reuse the media. So, I'm gonna boil it in case of some scale lurking down there. Meanwhile, it's boiling. The lecker is boiling. I might as well cut the forgotten wick. Oh, I forgot to put a wick to this pot. 
last time, so I'm not going to repeat that mistake again. Oh, cut the little cloth. Oh, not quite a long piece, relatively long. You know how long I've had this orchid? 2016. Winter of 2016, I think. It's a really slow grower. It's about this size. This tall when I when it arrived. So it wasn't a huge of a plant, but uh, I mean, of course it's doubled its size, but uh, it's really not a good progress. I wonder when will it bloom? How many years does this guy really need to be before it blooms? Yeah, that remains to be seen in the future. So, now it needs to create a new, another good root system here. Yeah, I hope I can get some life into these guys fairly soon. So, we'll start uh, growing again. And perhaps branching out and stuff. Yeah. So, now it's spoiled. And all of the lecta are to the surface. They're floating. <laughs> not floating, but uh, they are not so dense so as rocks. <laughs> so, they put themselves automatically to the so, now down with the little orchid, like this. This one grows in every direction and puts out new growth to any direction. So, I would just place her in the middle. And a bit deeper, part it this time. So the roots won't land on the surface, <laughs> become aerial. This time it needs a new root system underneath and inside the lecker, not as aerial roots in my dry conditions. This is the worst of ideas. Yep, and a little old gravel. Just falling to the bottom, so they're really easy to grab now and separate. So, not much of a work for me. It's perfect to reuse it. And uh, I also gonna reuse the old stakes. I just cut them here. The ugly dark part. I don't need to be all that tall sticks anyway. Just a little stake for uh, stability. Doesn't serve much of a purpose really, but uh, yeah, perhaps there as well, to the middle. Yeah, I don't need to stick anything up here and no strikes. Yeah, um, done, really. This one. I wonder what it blooms would look like. Yellow, pure yellow blooms. And this gorgeous Eclandii mixed up together. What on earth can that be? I tried to look it up, but I couldn't find any blooms from this cross. Yeah, maybe you can find it. P please give me a link in that case. Lelia Brigeri times Kitlea Eclandia cross. Yeah. And I'm going to spray this one with my leaf shine, of course, before I put it into its regular normal spot. But, um, in my room. But after having been sprayed, you shouldn't put it directly into the sunlight or nor artificial light, so you should be a little bit careful and wait for about yeah, twelve hours so or so before you put it back into the sunshine after having sprayed it with this leaf gloss, leaf shine. I wish I could find the right English word for it, but uh, yeah, maybe you tell me. <laughs> this one done? I wasn't supposed to do anything about this one. This one I wasn't supposed to touch even. 
Miriam Ketivola nowadays instead of Richara. Francis Fox Sunspot is my latest purchase um, regarding Francis Foxes. <laughs> nowadays I got two of them. Um, here's my old one. <laughs> the different size a lot, don't they? But uh, <laughs> that one's been in bloom. Doing great. Uh, <laughs> by getting this one, I thought this one could, yeah, would have different blooms regarding the sunspots. Additional word here. Words, sunspots. Perhaps there will be a difference, and it doesn't matter if I have two of them. Uh, I just, uh, I love the blooms so much. So, yeah, but anyway, I got this one, one, about one, almost one year ago from Swart as well. We recognize the tags. I think. <laughs> Upside down, but anyway, Swart purchases both of them, but, um, yeah, I'll remove this one a bit away. So, why do I want to do anything about this one? Yeah, these two guys. RC Pachara Fancy, lovely Kitlea, really lovely Kitlea hybrid. Happen to be sitting next to each other. And this one has got a really vigorous, fast growing whoops, root system, and one of its aerial roots made its way down to the bottom of this neighbor plant's pot, all the way through all of the lecker beets, down to the bottom, to the reservoir, seeking for water. Yeah, so you're an intelligent little Pachera fancy, yeah? Also very nice looking plant. Well, um, now I, ah, yeah, I can seize the chance of cleaning up his root system. See, so it wasn't all that bad that I had to rip it out of his pot in order to get the other ones, yay, root out from the bottom of this pot. <laughs> so I had to um, rip the whole plant up. Yeah, yeah. I never cleaned this one up either. And it's got a gorgeous, I'm oh, not gorgeous, but now it's got a root system. I'm not sure that it was so great when I transitioned it. So, but look at the plant itself. Newest growth is really, really <laughs> huge in, in comparison to the older growth. So this one is slowly but surely maturing. But of course, now I have to rinse it. Rinse the root system from bad roots and I'll get back to you. Since I already think that you know what cutting roots looks like. <laughs> and even though it hasn't got any scale, I cannot be enough. Sure. Since everything is going to be free from it from now on, I will not take any chances. They are always down here, normally. So, some rubbing alcohol on the cotton tissue only. To the canes, as the love to be down there. to the hollowness to, to the canes. Yeah. This root looks dead, but it's not. Neither is this one. Well, that part was dead, yeah. <laughs> but this brownish root is actually about to branch. So, not everything that's brown is dead. Okie dokie, now it's time to put her back. And I think that her old containers, yeah, yeah, it's a good one still. It still fits her, so down you go. Yes. Media rinsed. 
and I have a little bit of um, charcoal in the mixture. But I will add some more. This plant, I wouldn't want to lose for anything. It's a, an exceptionally good grower, this particular one. I think that this one is going to be even better than my previous one, my older one, larger one. And it would be so fun to compare uh, the blooms on the two of them. One day, perhaps, they will bloom simultaneously. Then we can make a comparison and see. Or if this is just a trick, another trick on selling more. You may never know when money is involved. So, so this will do. And I will stake her up and I will also spray her. So now, now she's done. I can still use this small size pot and save space still. Yes. So, the last orchid um, for this session up on the table. So, what is this? I guess you all recognize the yellow tag. Uh, Kiklia Pau, the actual car. One of my first purchases ever from Lucke Orchidine in Germany. Is this here? Look it. Brazilian uh, bare rooted import. This one arrived October 20. A little bit more than one year ago. Uh, I guess you all can count, but yeah. <laughs> Just to underline it a bit <laughs> for you, so you know. Um, and before I rip it out, I'm just going to show you its amazing root progress. From absolutely zero to hero. No. <laughs> to a huge amount of roots. And now it's really, really time for it to be upsized. Otherwise, the, the roots will all look and end up like this. Yeah. And it had a bit of scale, and it still has a little bit in there, which is going to be cleaned up today, but not much. And a bit of sun damage, or something else maybe, has been eating here. Um, I really did think this one would bloom for me, since it's been in bloom before, but... <laughs> It will not bloom, so perhaps another year. I think the blooms are worth waiting for. Since it's a vigorous grower, yeah, it may have a chance of really creating some good blooms in the future. Yeah, some of them just take a little bit longer to adapt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it came out. Good. Most part in here is gravel, an aquarium sand, and this poor liquor type. So no wonder this one wasn't really hydrated enough. But keep living and learning. And, yeah, a bit of scale to the stake. <laughs> Throw that away <laughs> immediately. Release the stakes. Do I really want to keep any of that? Well, perhaps the gravel. Let's boil it, and I will clean up the root system. But it's a good root system. I mean, it had, as I said, zero live roots. And of course, a few coming. I waited for the roots to come for two months in a mug before I transitioned it and potted it up into semi high -grow. So, good. Good in the good. So, gravel separated, easy, real easy from the old ugly leg beads poor quality cotton pad rubbing alcohol spread clean the little canes 
as well as peel off all of the old sheath, remaining sheath. That's where the little boss just loves to hide and look and multiply. So don't hesitate, just do it. Even if they are not visible to the eye, <laughs> I can just show you they are there somewhere without sounding paranoid. But I had my fair share of those little nasty creatures. Yeah, I may be the next coming scale expert in the orchid world. <laughs> By now. But anyway, there's an occupation out there for everybody, <laughs> isn't it? But uh, overall, not so many dead roots. We just need to get her down so the new root system will go down into the media. And be hydrated. Yeah, no, no, not really. Um, we'll see if I can see the scale I saw again, or if there are on the way somewhere else. Here, a little bit. Yeah, another favorite place for them to stay. Always Some alcohol. Not much I can do. But really, time to repot it, and it's going to be dealt with exactly the same way, but upsized from this small pot to this one, flat bottom pots, really. Of course, I can divide it now, or I can get rid of the oldest part here, but this one is focused on sizing still, this old part. And, yeah, well, for now, just keep it. So, this one is not too um, large for it. I just want to spread the roots out a bit, so I can press it down even more and give it some more room here to grow. And as you can see, it's only one year's growth worth here, so... Um, <laughs> Well, maybe I will have to divide it next year. But that's another year's oops, issue, isn't it? Not now. Not today. Now, the liquid beads I'm using are pre wet. They were sending water for six months now, really. Most of the orchids that I got from Lucky Brazilian Beirut import, uh, yeah, I've been satisfied with most part of them, if not to say all of them. So um, um, I'm really happy with my purchases. Some of them <laughs> could have been a little bit smaller. <laughs> they're really huge size now and they're not getting any smaller that much, I can tell you. Uh, I'm going to show you one of the large ones from Lucky. In a coming video, <laughs> so you can see for yourself. Yeah. And now all that's left is cleaning the leaves up before I spray it with the fatty spray. I would want it to photosynthesize a bit at least, and not being covered with all oh, fall too much uh, sticky spray. Yes. There are many many things to clean up leaves with, with good success. Lemon water, um, apple cider vinegar water, diluted of course, um, and milk, pure milk directly from the milk package. There's going to be a lot more reporting and dealing and managing orchids, alert orchids. Some really, really needs to be dealt with. Uh, I mean, right now, perhaps. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for watching this clip. Take care and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.